We're back with Paul Henderson, the hockey hero whose 1972 goal against Russia caused even Vladimir Putin to say brilliant. Paul Henderson's Team Canada Summit Series has been his on-ice highlight of his life. His new book, The Goal of My Life, takes things past that. Paul, it is a very provocative title for those of us who know you quite well. How do you describe the goal of your life? Well, it's my purpose statement. I had a wonderful mentor uh, shortly after I became a Christian, and he uh, really encouraged me to sit down and uh, develop a purpose statement for yourself. And I, I almost took me a full year uh, to get it down. And so uh, my purpose statement is to be a godly world change agent. And that is the goal of my life, to be a godly world change agent. Less than 10 syllables, that's the old marketing slogan there. So you did not always want to be a godly world change agent. No, I certainly didn't. I didn't grow up with a, a spiritual dimension. I was 32. Well, I was 29 before I started looking into it. Yeah, there's a story in your book that you looked up at the Alps when you were on a trip with Eleanor and with Ron Ellis and his wife, and you said, I'm going to go find God. Well, we were, we were in, the, in Switzerland, and we were right up at the top of the Jungfrau, and I looked around, and I said, this couldn't have happened by accident. And we'd been touring uh, Switzerland for about a week. And, and it just seemed to me there had to be a, a creator behind it. There had to be something. And I'd never really slowed down to look into it. And I really was very skeptical about Christianity, religions. I thought people that got into that were weak people. They couldn't cut it. But I decided that for some reason, I said, there must be a God and I'm going to find him. And that started my quest. That was in September. And then I met Mel Stevens in January. This guy, I can't believe you guys let this happen at the Maple Leafs because Bibles are such a controversy now. But this Mel Stevens guy comes in with Bibles that are embossed with the Maple Leaf logo yeah, exactly. on the cover. Gives you one. Then he has the audacity to go to your home one day, ask you to coach kids for free. And by the way, Paul, you don't seem very happy. Like, this is how you start your spiritual journey with, with your buddy Mel? That's exactly it. He came, and uh, I asked him, what do you pay? And he said, well, we don't pay. What, do you not know who you're talking to? <laughs> and, and then we got into a conversation, and he encouraged me. He said, have you ever looked at the spiritual dimension of life? And I said, nah, I'm not into that stuff. But, you know, it's, I mean, the, the guy, I could tell he was genuine, and he just seemed to have this wonderful peace about him, and so he said, if you want to look into it, I'll start meeting with you. And so we, he got me a Bible. Well, he'd given the team Bibles, but Harold didn't let him in the building. So I'd never met him before, took the Bible home, and I had it sitting up on my shelf. It was very nice. Of course, never opened it. But with his encouragement and started meeting with me, I started reading the Bible, and I had a million questions. And so we met for two years. I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours trying to figure out who this person Jesus was. Was he real or was he not? Was he who he said he was or was he wasn't? And so I, I thank goodness he had the patience of Job because I was a very skeptical guy. You didn't leave hockey. You, you look into this Jesus stuff and Birmingham where you're playing, you go one day and it's bankrupt. Your equipment is gone. Exactly. And you decide, you, you try a little bit of money sales. You make, I think, what are 87 accounts in just three months you open up in, in brokerage sales. Yeah. You had a choice to make. Am I going to go on the path of money? You had this God pull. What happened? Well, it, we couldn't get my green card mainly, but I think it was the Lord. And uh, to make a long story short, I really had a sense that God was saying to me, okay, Paul, I brought you down here and I got you mentored. Uh, you understand what it is to walk with me. Go back to Canada and reach out to the Paul Hendersons of the world. The Paul Hendersons, the guys are successful, but they're not interested in spiritual things. They're not going to go to church. But like you, they need some place to come and be able to discuss it. And so I really felt that's what God was telling me to do. So I came back, to, I got some seminary training, and we came back to Canada in 84 with a desire to reach out to the business and professional world. And uh, everybody reached, there's other people reach out to the government. Hundreds government. of guys have gone in these groups that you started out of the golf club, yeah. and you spread it through Bay Street, and I've heard about it popping up everywhere, actually coast to coast. What's the basic question you want people to answer about God? Well, I, I just want them to look into it. I think anybody that sits down and takes the time, and sometimes it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of books. I probably read 20 books beside the Bible. But I think if somebody intelligently looks at Jesus, you will come to the conclusion that he is who he says he is. 
And the wonderful thing about my situation, I had 32 years of experience living on one side of the fence, and now I've been a Christian since 1975. And so I've got a lot of experience on the other side of the fence now, and I know how they think over there, and I know the results of it. There are so many questions I could ask you about this, but we've got to talk about now you are asking God one of the toughest questions. You are filled with cancer, Paul. Mm -hmm. What has your conversation with God been like about cancer? Well, you know, it's really interesting. I was diagnosed in November of 09. And I didn't know whether, uh, they, you know, they, I found out I had cancer. I didn't know whether I had a month to live, two months, six months, didn't even know what it was. Eventually, I found out that I have lymphocytic lymphoma, chronic leukemia. And, uh, but, uh, and so you start looking into it. I knew nothing about cancer. But I found myself, uh, and this was spontaneous. I get up every morning. I spend time with the Lord. I read my Bible, and a lot of mornings I journal. January of 9, I, I wrote in my journal... Lord, I know you didn't give me cancer, but I thank you for the cancer because this is the intimacy that I always wanted to have with you. And cancer, you get cancer, you can differentiate the trivial from the important very, very quickly. And the wonderful thing about it, God says, his peace that surpasses all understanding. And maybe because of the mentoring I'd received and I'd been a Christian for a long time, I can tell you I've had no angst or fear of dying whatsoever. Now, I'm not happy that I've got cancer. I've obviously got a credible it's wife and family. very serious cancer as very well. Serious. You're in there's experimental no, treatments. No, yeah, there's no yeah. cure for it. And so I'm going to die. But the reality is the promises that Jesus gives you. And I would say to people, uh, Lorna, when you have hope and you have peace, you can handle anything. And I, I am fully convinced that this world, this whole life is just, you know, it's just the warm-ups, not the game. And I'm 69. Like, I can't think of anybody that's lived a better life than I have. And whether I live another six months, a year, 10 years, or 20 years, it'll just go like that. But God is a kingdom which is imperishable, undefiled, will not fade away. And I'm going to spend eternity with him. And so, and he tells us not to worry. I promised I would ask your advice for every person facing cancer. Well, you do everything to stay alive. I mean, I'm in excellent shape. I take a lot of supplements. The guys on staff tell me you can still do 70 push-ups. Just yeah, like could, this right now, you could do it. I could do them. Yeah. And, and so you do everything you can. You, I, I take supplements. I'm down, I'm in a, a clinical trial in the United States. I know my body, and I know that I wouldn't do well with chemo because my body's never handled drugs. And so I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting. I mean, you know, married to the woman I married, I want to stay alive. But, uh, but the reality is, you, you, I, I refuse to let cancer define me. I, 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 I'm going to enjoy every day. And, uh, and so I get up in the morning. I start it with the Lord. I ask for wisdom. I ask for guidance. I ask them to help me to be the man I want to be. And then I just go out there and, okay, Lord, what have you got for me today? And, uh, and, and if you trust God, but, but God gives you, and I'm not a brave person. I'm no chance. But his Holy Spirit, has just protected me, like I have no fear of dying whatsoever, no angst. And, and I had a reaction to the drug here just a little while ago, and I had eight days, and I was covered with a, a rash that you wouldn't believe. And, uh, you know, so nobody gets through the wrinkle-free life. Yeah, you couldn't even go to Russia with the team. No, I missed that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. but then I had eight days at home to read and relax and meditate. And how many people get to take eight days shutting things down and not doing anything? And so another time I journaled, Lord, when I got through it, Man, there was a positive side of this also. Wow, so don't do cancer without doing God is what I'm hearing. Don't, I, I could never handle this without the Lord. No chance in 100 years. Paul Henderson, thank you very much. Now we want to know what you think. Are chronic salary wars ruining people's appetite for big sports? Join the conversation, send us your answers by phone or email, Facebook or Twitter. And coming up, a few thoughts on what we can take from Paul Henderson's life and the state of the game that he loves. Well, this was a sports episode about values, NHL-wide, 
We looked at what values were driving the NHL lockout, and then we brought it down to the player. How does a hockey star choose his personal values? And Paul Henderson told us this. Have God shape your values and you can handle anything. In Paul Henderson's case, low NHL wages when he played the game, and today his retirement bonus includes a body full of cancer. He says God has given him peace and joy about it all. I am impressed. Well, check out the source for those values. Paul told us, go get your own peace with God. And uh, we've got some links on how you can do that at our website. And you can get your name in for the giveaway on Paul Henderson's book, The Goal of My Life. I'm Lorna Duick for all of us at Context TV. Thanks for watching. Join us next week as we explore life beyond the headlines.